Hey guys, let's get more news about Miami Heat, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Cavs Evan Mobley Returns vs. Heat Cavaliers forward Evan Mobley was slated to return after a nine-game absence in time for Sunday's road game versus the Miami Heat, per Chris Fedor of Cleveland.com. Mobley, who missed six weeks earlier this season following a knee procedure, will be back on a minutes restriction, Fedor reported. The Cavs, 43-27, hold a one-game lead over the New York Knicks for the third seed in the Eastern Conference entering Sunday. They also play Monday at home versus the Charlotte Hornets. Mobley missed nine straight games with his latest injury, which he suffered March 5 versus the Boston Celtics. He will return to the starting lineup alongside center Jarrett Allen. When you've gone as long as he has gone without playing games, you need to get up to NBA speed, coach J.B. Bickerstaff said, via Fedor. Fortunately, it happens pretty quickly for him because of his IQ, his understanding of where to be on the floor and kind of who he is and the selfless nature that he plays the game with. Then you have to find your wind and conditioning and all those things as well. Donovan Mitchell, knee slash nose, Max Struss, knee, and Dean Wade, knee, remain out. How Struss and Wade became injured has not been made clear by the Cavs. Eric Spolster details Victor Oladipo incident with Gambler, who was beside himself at Heat game last year. Sports betting has become a significant part of the NBA in recent years, with the league aggressively moving into the gambling space. However, there has also been some pushback on the matter, and Miami Heat head coach Eric Spolstra is among those who have expressed apprehension about it. I do think it's somewhat contradictory, Spolstra said of the NBA eagerly moving into the gambling space. I think it treads on a weird line, for sure. Spolstra talked with the media prior to the Heat's matchup against the Cleveland Cavaliers on Wednesday and recalled an alarming experience with a gambler last season. The individual seemingly wanted Victor Oladipo to take at least one more shot even if the game had already been decided, probably so he could hit a bet. We had an incident behind our bench last year, with Vic Oladipo, Spolstra said. Somebody was screaming. Security had to take him away. The game was already over, and evidently, he didn't shoot an open three at the end of the game. The game was already decided, and this fan was totally beside himself, and he was a gambler. He had money on whatever the score was. The Heat, Spolstra, and Oladipo are likely fortunate that trouble didn't follow them after the contest. On the same day Spolster shared his story, Cavaliers head coach J.B. Bickerstaff also revealed his own anecdote with disgruntled sports bettors. Bickerstaff may have had it worse because he and his family have received threats due to lost bets and parleys. It looks like the offenders are willing to take drastic measures to get even, as they were able to find his phone number. Commissioner Adam Silver, who has been a huge proponent of legalized sports betting in the NBA, has yet to publicly address the issue. Still, the fact that coaches have joined the chorus of several players who have pushed back against gambling should draw the league's attention. Fortunately for the Heat organization and its fans, Spolster managed to lead Miami to a 107-104 victory on Wednesday. Jimmy Butler paced his squad with 30 points, and Terry Rozier scored the team's last five points, including a go-ahead three-pointer in the final seconds of the match. The Heat couldn't maintain their winning ways, though, losing to the New Orleans Pelicans on Friday. They will look to avoid suffering another defeat when they face Cleveland again on Sunday. With Miami currently in the play-in picture and 1.5 games behind the sixth-seeded Indiana Pacers, it needs to take every contest from here on seriously if it wants to secure an outright playoff berth instead of having to go through the play-in tournament like it did last year. Bam Adebayo came to the rescue of the Miami Heat on Sunday, as his buzzer-beating three-pointer gave his team a 104-101 victory in Motor City over the Detroit Pistons. The Heat big man was the unlikely hero for his team since he's never been a legitimate threat from deep this season. 
he even shot just 11.8% from long distance last week, but seems to be finding his stroke of late, going 3-3 on his three-point attempts over the last three Miami games. For Miami Heat head coach Eric Spolstra, it was just right that Adebayo is finding his target lately, considering how bad the center shot from behind the arc a week ago. Sometimes there's karma in this game, Eric Spolstra said after the game, per the Associated Press, hat tip ESPN. Bam was just outstanding for us, especially defensively, with all the things he was doing and everything he got on the glass. Sometimes the ball just happens to find that guy, Spolstra added. Adebayo finished the Pistons game with 20 points and 17 rebounds while shooting 9-13 to from the field in 38 minutes. That kind of performance was very much needed by the Heat, especially with Jimmy Butler sidelined with a foot issue. So far in the 2023-24 NBA regular season, Adebayo is averaging 19.9 points and 10.5 rebounds per outing. He is shooting just 23.5% from deep, but at least during one game, his three-point shooting sealed a win for the Heat, who are still fighting for a top-six spot in the Eastern Conference standings. Pelicans forward takes direct shot at Jimmy Butler and Heat in now-deleted post. The Miami Heat have had a rocky month, and on Friday, they fell meekly to the surging New Orleans Pelicans, 111-88. Back in February, the squad earned a road win over the Pelicans, and after that contest, Jimmy Butler said the Heat would win their next contest against them as well. In response, after Friday's game, New Orleans forward Nagy Marshall threw shade at Butler and his team. On Friday, the Heat put forth a very weak offensive performance, shooting just 36% from the field and 27.7% from three-point range. Butler didn't play up to his standards, as he shot just 5 of 12 overall and scored 17 points. As usual, the Heat have been dealing with injury issues. Guard Tyler Harrow, one of their primary offensive threats, has been out for about a month, while Duncan Robinson, one of their best outside shooters, didn't play Friday because of a back ailment. At the same time, the Pelicans didn't have star forward Brandon Ingram, who was dealing with a knee injury. With a 38-32 record, Miami is in seventh place in the Eastern Conference, but it is just 1.5 games behind the Indiana Pacers, who are in sixth place. As a result, the team has a very real chance of avoiding the play-in tournament and the potential dangers that come with having to participate in it. Last season, the Heat lost their first play-in game to the Atlanta Hawks, and they had to fight back from a fourth-quarter deficit in their next game to defeat the Chicago Bulls just to reach the playoffs. Of course, once they got to the playoffs, they got hot like a summer's day in South Florida and made it all the way to the NBA Finals. One concern the team may have these days is the play of Terry Rozier, who the Heat acquired prior to the trade deadline in order to jumpstart their offense. Rozier put up strong numbers before as a member of the Charlotte Hornets, but in 23 games with Miami, he's shooting just 41% from the field, and his scoring average is down from what it used to be. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation of Najee Marshall? Leave your opinion in the comments.